Next we will see read operation in HDFS. As usual, HDFS block size is 128 megabyte and replication factor is 3. Consider reading log.txt file from HDFS. Its size is 300 megabyte. This file is divided into three blocks. First and second block size is 128 megabyte and last block size is 44 megabyte. Each block has three replicas because replication factor is 3. Here first replica of all three blocks is stored in data node 1, data node 2, and data node 3. Other replicas are stored in data node 5, and data node 6. That was details about log.txt in the HDFS cluster. Now we shall talk about read operation. As said earlier, interaction between client and HDFS cluster is handled by HDFS client library. To read log.txt file, client must first call open method in the HDFS client library. This will make an RPC call to the name node to get the block IDs in their location. Block ID information of this file is available in the metadata, which is stored in the main memory. And data nodes to block ID mapping is available in block location. Even this is stored in main memory. Using these two information, Name node returns block ID and IP address of the data nodes for first few blocks. In our example, for block ID 1, name node returns address of data node 1, 5 and 6. For block ID 2, it returns address of data node 2, 5 and 6. And finally for block ID 3, it returns address of data node 3, 5 and 6. This list is sorted by network distance from the client. It means data node 1 is nearer to the client than data node 5. Similarly data node 5 is nearer than data node 6. Now HDFS client contacts data node 1 directly and requests transfer of block ID 1. Data from block ID 1 is transferred to the client. If it all read fails. HDFS client will contact next data node in the list. In our example it is data node 5. Let's assume there is no such error and block ID 1 is transferred from data node 1. After reading block ID 1, HDFS client disconnects from data node 1. Then finds the nearest data node for the next block. As said earlier, that the list is sorted by network distance from the client. First address in the list is the nearest data node. In our example it is data node 2. So block 2 is transferred from data node 2. Same process is repeated until the whole file is read block by block. This process is concealed from the client application. The client application sees it as a continuous stream of data. This is how data is read from HDFS cluster. Let's take one more example. In this example, client is not outside the cluster, instead it is some task on data node 5, usually map reduce task. This task will read log.txt file. Here our PC call will be made from data node 5 to get block ID and location. Because the task is running on data node 5. As I said earlier, name node will always return sorted list of data nodes. In our example all the blocks are available in data node 5. The task is also running on data node 5. So data node 5 is the nearest node from task. As a result, name node will return the sorted list such that data node 5 is the first element. Now the task will read all the blocks from its own machine. Here data is not transferred across the network. This is a good performance gain. That was all about reading data within the cluster. In general, 
data is always read from the nearest data nodes, so that network delay is reduced. One important aspect of HDFS read is that the client contacts data nodes directly to retrieve data. This design allows large number of clients to read data from different data nodes in parallel. Load is distributed among the data nodes in the cluster. The name node has to serve only block location. So there will not be much load on name node. This is why HDFS is called Scalable System. That was all about HDFS read operation.